just as interesting as the action that was filmed. And we've got all the stories. The ramp to the aircraft museum was literally scaffolding and scaffold boards that had been put up a day or two before we got there. It was fairly rickety. It's enormous, that building. They put the cars out at the ends there and you couldn't see who or what was going on. I mean, it was terrifying up there, you know. Just as tricky was this sequence. It's all about timing. Good luck! Too slow and you topple. Too fast and you damage the cars. In the sewer, a loop-to-loop -loop proved impossible, but our telly magic shows what it would have looked like. Notice how some of the cars grew extra lights to help visibility in the sewer, which, by the way, was in Coventry. But it was back in Turin, where they filmed the most dangerous stunt of all. I have to say that the roof jump looked absolutely terrifying. It was across a street. It's not across a small gap between two buildings. Obviously, the danger lay in the mishap. If someone's foot slipped off the accelerator or some mechanical failure occurred, the driver would have simply splattered into the wall opposite. And Michael Dealey was quite nervous, I think, because there was a law in Italy at the time that said if there was an accident, the producer of the film would be the man held responsible, even if he didn't have anything to do with the technical setup of the stunt. And he, in actual fact, had a car with its engine running, waiting by the factory door where they were shooting this, and a plane at the airport ready. If anything nasty happened, I was out the back door very quickly, and preferring to argue the toss from safer place. The whole thing was a very nerve-wracking affair. The extras were tense. And it was terrifying. Yeah, lots of measurements were taken and lots of pacing, but no one was really too sure. And even Remy still says to this day, you know, he was very nervous of that stunt. It was a long drop down and no one was too sure how well the minis had hold together. One cameraman went off to be sick because he couldn't cope with the stress. A lot of conjoling went in to sort of get the drivers to, to actually stand up and give it a good go. You know, of course, another thing, they had to go and empty their bladders because the idea of an impact if you've got a full bladder, it's not going to be a very nice thing either. My father said, well, look, if, if you make it, I'll be the other side of the jump with a bottle of whiskey for you all. And they all really remember this moment of the minis going over and there was my father with a bottle of whiskey and they all got out of the cars and had a good drink afterwards to calm the nerves. The rotten thing about it all is that the stunt was much more exciting in real life on the set than it looks on film because the film was it wasn't shot properly. I think it's a shame it isn't really captured well on film. You know, the gravity of the situation, if you like. If you want to do height, you shoot from above. You don't shoot up because shoot up could as well be on the ground. Using Tiff's toys, we can show you how it should have looked. <laughs> Mind you, the jump wasn't the only scene that required a bit of risk taking. Basically, someone had to wave them up to the ramps to line the wheels up. But if you think about the width of the coach and the width of a minute, it was literally about four inches spare. So any inch either side, and whoever's standing there at the end of the coach was not going to be very well afterwards. Get the wheels in line! Get the wheels in line with it! So nobody would do it. And even Remy's team weren't going to stand there. They're like, well, no, we'll stay in the car, thank you very much. So to have the stunt, my father, no problem. I'll do it. So if you actually watch the film, that is my father, the director, with the beard, waving the minis on. But perhaps the most impressive scene was one which didn't involve any moving cars at all. Of course, there was a bit of help from... The Mafia. They'll be waiting for you. The Mafia were paid all the time. What the Mafia did is they supplied the extras and there were 300 extras with 300 cars. Turin was jammed for real, and someone was basically bribed at the uh, traffic light centre. Everybody in the world is bent. I mean, there was havoc every day we shot there. There were traffic jams without us. You can imagine with us. If you tried to jam the centre of Turin or jam the centre of London by bribing someone, you'd all end up in prison, but in those days you seemed to sort of get away with it and it was all sort of nudge and a wink and no problem. Did anyone get permission to throw three old minis down an area of natural beauty? No! I don't think they did. Which, of course, brings us to the most frustrating ending in movie history. One that was chosen only after five others were dismissed. They got rather complicated, involving Swiss bank accounts and people meeting in Geneva. There were so many endings touted, <laughs> you know, uh, one of which I really liked. 
which didn't happen was um, I seem to remember they were going to arrive at the bank, deposit the gold. They were going to be shown into the manager's office, and when the leather chair swiveled round, it was going to be the head of the mafia was the, was the owner of the bank, which would have been a good ending. My favourite end comes from this 1969 book of the film, which I bought for five shillings. And in it, having been made to give the gold back to Fiat, Charlie lifts the spirits of the boys by saying, haven't you ever heard of General Motors? Cinema's original cliffhanger was, in fact, dreamt up by producer Dealey, although neither Michael Caine nor director Peter Collinson liked the idea of keeping everything up in the air. Hang on a minute, lads. I've got a great idea. So what was the great idea? Well, Michael Caine maintains that it was to start the coach's engine, run the fuel tank dry, thus shifting the balance forwards, so they could all hop out to safety, leaving the gold to plunge into the valley below. But we've also heard that the Mafia could have sent two helicopters with a line strung between them, lifted the coach and bagged the gold for themselves. But the intended sequel never came. Well, the reason there wasn't a sequel is the film never worked in America. Uh, it absolutely didn't work, and for years we blamed the Paramount publicity. The American poster was misleading. It wasn't a 